Are you having difficulties figuring out how to use vehicles in Heroclix? Well, you've come to the right place, so let's go check it out. Hey guys, welcome back to your Heroclix headquarters. Today we're going to be discussing how to use vehicles in Heroclix. There's a lot of rules associated with them and uh, sometimes they can get a little bit confusing. So without further ado, let's see how it works. Alright, so first we have to ask what is a vehicle? A vehicle is going to be defined by the steering wheel symbol on its defense slot. They will also usually have the vehicle keyword. Now most vehicle rules can be found on the cards of the vehicles themselves. So let's take a look first at the basics of what a vehicle does. So to start us off here, it says vehicles. Vehicles can use improved movement hindering terrain, can automatically break away, and have protected mind control. Vehicles don't modify their speed value due to the carryability, and when using the passenger symbol, they may carry characters with the flight symbol. All right, so all of that is very good. All vehicles that have the vehicle defense symbol there are going to automatically have the improved movement hindering train, so they're not going to uh, put it on the front of the card there like they normally would. Vehicles can automatically break away, so they're good to make a getaway, unless your opponent is using plasticity, where it says you can't automatically break away. Uh, they have protected mind control, which is great, uh, and it makes sense since most vehicles don't have minds to control, and being able to carry characters with the flight symbol and without having to modify their speed value is awesome. Most vehicles will have a pretty big speed value. Uh, so if looking at this one here, at full points it starts out with a 12 movement and passenger 2. So you're going to be able to carry two characters and when you do you don't have to subtract two from your speed value. You can go the full 12 squares if you wanted to. And being able to carry characters with flight that can't normally be carried uh, can be a huge benefit as well. All right, so that's all the cool stuff vehicles can do, but the second part here tells us what vehicles can't do. Vehicles can't be given actions unless they have a pilot, can't use the inherent object actions, such as picking up an object or using a close or range object action. They can't be carried, so while they're great at carrying characters, they themselves cannot be carried. They cannot be chosen by characters using the mastermind power, most vehicles tend to be pretty cheap with pretty long dials, so they're not allowed to be used as mastermind targets, uh, especially since, like I said, they don't have minds, so they're not going to jump in the way of their boss, they're just going to sit there. And they cannot be assigned resources unless the resource is part of that vehicle's dial and or card. So there's only a couple vehicles that actually have resources as part of their dial or card. Um, this is not one of them. Actually, all resources right now are phased out of Modern, so if you're mainly playing Modern Age, you won't have to worry about that. But it is important to remember if you're playing Golden Age games that if the vehicle doesn't have a resource built into it, it cannot be assigned one. And the last thing it says is that it can't change its size. So any effect that would replace a vehicle's damage symbol is ignored, and it keeps its printed damage symbol. So there's no trying to make the Batmobile tiny or colossal, it's going to stay normal sized. Now on to the most important part, piloting. As long as the vehicle has no pilot, adjacent friendly standard characters have power, become this vehicle's pilot. Pilots are removed from the map and placed on the vehicle's Heroclix card. So let's take a quick look at how exactly that works. So if our friendly Batman here wanted to become our Batmobile's pilot, all you'd have to do is give him a power action, giving him his action token, then placing him on the vehicle's Heroclix card off to the side, and now Batman is piloting the Batmobile. So what does piloting do for us? Well, let's take another look at the card and we will find out. If a vehicle has a pilot, it has the following. 
Power, place the pilot adjacent. Free, replace this vehicle's attack damage and range values with the printed values of its pilot until your next turn. And free, choose a standard attack or damage power its pilot can use. This vehicle can use the chosen power, but can't use its attack or damage powers until your next turn. So first of all, the vehicle can be given a power action in order to place its pilot adjacent. So one thing that's important to note here is that uh, if Batman had just become the pilot, uh, let's say this turn or last turn, his action token would actually remain even while he's off the map and it would have to go until the next turn if he didn't make any actions that he would be able to clear his action token as normal even while off the map on the vehicle's card. So in this instance, if Batman had just become the pilot last turn, giving the Batmobile a power action to place him adjacent, uh, he would still have his action token from having been given an action last turn. So it is actually possible to give Batman a power action to become the pilot, and then give the Batmobile a power action to place him adjacent in the same turn. Uh, now, there's not really a lot of benefits for doing this other than maybe just to be able to give the vehicle a free action and then you might want to pop him back out for some reason. But if you do do something like that, then he would still have his action token and he would still have been considered to have been given an action this turn, so he can't be given another one. Now, the next part of the pilot abilities is a free action that lets you replace the vehicle's attack damage, and range values with those three values of its pilot. Now it will be all three values, you don't get to pick and choose, um, but taking a look at both of these cards, so we can see that if uh, we were playing both of these figures at their top dials, as a free action we could choose to replace the Batmobile's 6 range, 11 attack, and 3 damage, with Batman's 0 range, 12 attack, and 3 damage. Now, while that might not sound too great, uh, we don't have to do this, it's just a free action. And you can do this free action whenever. So while it might not always be beneficial top dial, you can do this throughout the whole dial. So maybe by click number six here, when the vehicle goes to a 10 movement with charge, a nine attack and a two damage, it would in fact be much better to take Batman's 12 attack and three damage uh, since we'll most likely want to be charging with it at that point, the zero range wouldn't really matter. And like I said, you can do this throughout the whole dial, so even all the way back here, on its last click, when it goes down to an eight attack and one damage, you can still replace its values with the top click Batman that's piloting it. Being a 12 attack and three damage is a huge improvement over the eight attack and one damage of the weakened Batmobile. So that is one of the good strategies for using vehicles, picking a good pilot with strong opening stats that you can use to replace throughout the whole dial of a vehicle can be very reliable and very powerful. So while we're here, the other pilot ability is a free action that lets you choose a standard attack power or a standard damage power that the pilot can use and then the vehicle can use that power as well. But if you do choose to do that, you will be losing access to any attack or damage power the vehicle has. So for instance, if on our first click we wanted to use Batman's Outwit, we would have to be giving up the Batmobile's Precision Strike and Empower. So again, this is another optional free action. Uh, it might be more helpful some turns than others, but again, it's important to remember that you can use it throughout the whole dial. So at any point that you might want to use Batman's Outwit, uh, you could take that free action even if it's way later on. Having the ability to choose a powerful damage power like Outwit can be very helpful uh, throughout the whole dial whenever you would need it. So again, choosing a good pilot that has good attack and damage powers to choose from uh, can be very effective when you combine that with the long dials of a vehicle. Another important thing to note about the ability to choose a standard attack or standard damage power that the pilot can use 
is that it can use any standard power that they can use. So if the pilot has a trait or a special power that says that it can use a standard attack or damage power, then you do have the option to pick one of those as well. And additionally, it has been ruled that if the pilot can use a standard attack or damage power granted from an equipment object, then that is also counted as a standard attack or damage power it can use. So you can pick one of those for the vehicle to use, which could lead to some pretty interesting combos. So on to the next part, wrecked vehicles. When a vehicle is KO'd, wrecked, generate a standard heavy object in a square it occupied. Place the pilot in or adjacent to that square and roll a d6. On a one to three, deal the pilot two unavoidable damage, and on a four through a six, deal the pilot one unavoidable damage. So piloting vehicles can help keep your characters safe for a long time, since most vehicles do have long dials. But in the end, if they're still piloting it when the vehicle's destroyed, uh, they are going to have to suffer a click or two of unavoidable damage. So if a vehicle is KO'd, it's considered wrecked, and once you remove it from the map, you place a standard heavy object in any square it occupied, and then you can place the pilot in or adjacent to that square. And then at the bottom here, it says pilot abilities. Some vehicles may have a pilot ability trait. This trait has one or more prerequisites involving characters' names, point values, keywords, and or having certain symbols printed on the base. If the pilot of the vehicle does not match these prerequisites, this trait does not exist. If it does meet the prerequisites, then the vehicle can use the trait normally. So a good example of that is actually right here on this Batmobile. It has a pilot ability trait that says prerequisite Batman family keyword willpower. So that means if the pilot has the Batman family keyword, then the vehicle can use willpower. So it might be important to note that having the vehicle defense symbol is not like having indomitable. It will not give you willpower. It just makes you a vehicle. So it's important to remember that if a vehicle doesn't have willpower on its dial or as part of some kind of a trait, then it normally can't use willpower and will take pushing damage if you give it to action tokens. So lastly, I want to talk about the autopilot ability. The autopilot ability says, this vehicle may be given actions without a pilot. When you do so, immediately after resolutions, deal the vehicle one unavoidable damage. Now, this will be one unavoidable damage after every action, including free actions such as sidestep, perplex, outwit, etc. But having the ability to be given actions without a pilot can be great, uh, even just to carry your team around. Now, not all vehicles have the autopilot ability. Uh, normally, they will have to have it listed here in their trait, like this one, where it says autopilot and adjacent friendly characters with the Batman family keyword can be given a free action instead of a power action to become this vehicle's pilot. Uh, so that lets you know that it can use the autopilot ability. And on top of that, Batman family characters can be given free actions instead of power actions to become the pilot of this Batmobile, which is a really cool ability. All right, guys, I hope you learned a thing or two. And uh, if you did, make sure you leave a like on this video. I'd appreciate it. And if you have any more questions, make sure you leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. But as always, make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And until next time, this has been Heroclix Headquarters, signing off.